All right, so in the last lesson, what we did was we established a relationship between events and event categories, and then we went through and ripped out all of the code that referenced event type. That was that enum that we were using uh, to categorize events before we had the more powerful technique of using persistent event category objects to categorize events. So uh, this, this uh, video, we're just gonna do a little bit more cleanup. Uh, and then in the next video, we'll be able to do our database migration and testing. The one thing that we did not do um, in our um, last video is to really deal with the main index display. So recall that our main event listing, uh, you know, it's going to have a list of events. And then if we go to the template for that, it's going to display uh, the, uh, the, the, the characteristics, the properties of each of those events. And so we are uh, still missing some important data. Right now, this table still references, still has the word event type in it. It still references a type field, which um, doesn't exist anymore. So we need to refactor this code in order to get it to work. So let's go into our events controller. And so um, there's a couple of things we need to do here. The first thing in this controller is that we want to uh, make sure that our events are loaded with their corresponding category objects. So um, and, and this is explained in a little bit more depth in the text in the book, but essentially, um, by default, Entity Framework will use a concept called lazy loading, which means that it won't load data from uh, outside of the given table. So if I'm so if I'm querying for events objects, it will only load data from within that events table, even if there are foreign keys into other tables that are refer or, or you know or, or references to other objects. That data will not be loaded right away. Um, and that's just to sort of make sure that database queries are efficient and you're not loading lots and lots of data you don't need. So uh, in this case, though, however, we do actually want to load some um, additional data that does not live in the events table. And that is we want to load the categories that are associated with each event. So in order to do that, I can uh, chain uh, in, in between here after context.events, I can put dot include. And then I can specify um, what I want to be included additionally in this query. And in particular, I want to make sure that the category property is included. So the way we specify that is we put a Lambda expression in here. And so make sure that you've read the section on Lambda expressions. Uh, a Lambda expression is sort of like a little inline function that uses uh, what we call a fat arrow. And in the include method, I, if I put in a Lambda expression and the return value of that Lambda expression is the property um, that I want to include, that will be then added to the query. So here I can say E E dot category. Okay. And let's see. We probably need an import here. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So again, what this says, we'll go line by line. This uh, says we want to query the events table. This says when we do that, we want to make sure that we include references to this other table, the category table. So there's going to be a foreign key, as we'll see in the next video. Uh, from events into uh, categories, and then we're going to list all of those out. And so now when I get this passed into the view, I will have categories on all of my events. So that's great. Now let's go back into the view, and we're going to have to do a little bit more refactoring. So uh, here, let's just fix this. This should be relatively easy. Um, I'm just going to say category instead of event type. And then down below, when I'm looping through this, instead of saying events dot type, I want to say events dot category. And I don't want to stop there because that's not a full object. I want to actually reference the name property of that category object. Okay. And so that should work to display in that final column, the name of the category that the given event belongs to. Okay. And so that's all the, the actual coding we need to do. Um, before we can actually test though, we're going to need to run a database migration. So the next video focuses on uh, migrations and testing.